Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, I'm going to be finishing our rock, paper, scissors machine by implementing some wind detection. So here's how my sort of wind detection is going to work. It's going to display here, and this one right here, this one's going to display if there's a draw. So if we've got a draw, then it's going to turn this lamp on. Now, this one, I'm going to say that's if this side right here, if this side wins. So, if this side wins, then that lamp's going to turn on. And of course, if this side wins, that means this side loses. So, of course, our final one is going to be if this side loses and this side wins. And I can actually go ahead and build that part right now. Because the way I'm going to test for that is if we aren't getting a draw, and this side right here didn't win, then therefore, the only other possible out outcome is that, well, that this side loses, and this side wins. So, there. And that's one of the things that's going to make this a little bit easier. Of course, we still need to do draw detection, and we still need to check if this side wins. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start right here in the back with some draw detection. Now, you can start off draw detection with pr pretty much any of the three combinations you want. But I'm going to start off with paper and paper, because paper and paper are both right in the center. So, it should be easy to do some sort of logic with that. Now, before I move on, I never really showed you how to actually get power out of these RS NORs. There's two ways. You can either take power from... Well, I'm taking from paper, so I'll take it from here. You can either take it from here, or here. And this will turn off if I select paper. I'm actually just going to use this center one, and I'm going to take... Yeah, I can use repeater. I'll, I'll use repeater. And... I'll send them into a NOR gate. Now, since both of these turn off only when I both have papers, the only time this torch will turn on, and actually I'm going to do it here, the only time this will turn on is if I have both paper and paper. So, let's see what happens. If I press paper, that turns off. Nothing happens because this torch is still being powered from right here. If I press from here, I have paper and paper. And that wire turns on. And now all I really have to do is send it into the draw command right here. And you know, this torch isn't really placed very nicely for me to power it, so I'm actually going to move this. I'm going to move this torch to right here. That way, rather than powering from below, I can just power from the side. And get the same effect, and I don't have to go down and do, or do anything weird to get this to power the torch down there. So... Yeah, all I did is I took this torch that's usually right here. Actually, I can get rid of this one since I already have that right there. But yeah, I got, took the torch that's usually right there and just moved it to right there. So, same effect. And now, we can detect if we have both paper and paper. So cool. Now, I'll move on to scissors and scissors. Now, I could try taking it from the center again, but I pretty much can't do that anymore, because I tried taking power from the center, well, yeah, that's just going to conflict with my existing logic. So, this logic is nice, but it's completely shut off this center option, so for the last two, I have to take power from right here, on both of them. Now, I'm not going to worry about it on these two yet, because I'm just dealing with scissors, but yeah, that's worth noting. So, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have it power some wire here with a torch, similar to the way I'm doing this, and I'm going to send that into this torch that I already have using a repeater. That way this torch doesn't power the wire and just keep powering itself and burning out. Now, I think I'm going to put the torch right here. And for this one, hmm, for now I'm going to do it like this with repeater going down, and just do a big curvy wire all the way over here. 
I might change this to a half slab and just take power down like that a bit later. But for now, I'm just going to do it like this. And yeah, that's the first one. This one's a little trickier, though, because I don't really have a good way of taking power down. And if I try taking it this way, well, that's going to conflict with this one when I have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do sort of the reverse torch tower. I'm going to have this power this. It adds two ticks, but that's okay, because it still gets the power in the proper location. And there you go. Now I should be able to check if I have both scissors and scissors, and hey, there you go. And of course, if I change something else, like say scissors and paper, it doesn't change to draw. Okay, good. And that just leaves us with one possible combination. This one, well, rock and rock, which I have to take from here and here. And you might think, oh no, this is a problem because this torch is powering this, and I only want this powered if I have rock. But the thing is, yes, this turns off if I have rock, but the only time this torch turns on is if I have both scissors and scissors. And if I have scissors and scissors, then this is going to be on anyways because, well, I don't have rock. So it doesn't matter that it's powering this because it will never be turned on when this should be off. So yeah, kind of tricksy, but it works. So I am going to change this one to a half slab. I'm going to do like this. And yeah, now that I can see this, I'm probably not going to change it to a half slab because it's just going to get a little bit weird when I try sending power down like that. So yeah, I'm going to take power down here. I'm going to try to take it through the center. I can't go out this way because I would break out of the 9x9 cube. And I can't really place another torch here because, well, I don't really have a good way of putting power into it. Now if I try putting it here, I can't really put it there either because that's as I place the torch here, well, whoops, I placed one too low, but if you're placing it here, that's going to power that, and that screws up that torch. So instead, I'm going to place it right here. And this torch... actually, will that cause... actually, yes, that will cause a problem. The torch I don't think will, but this will, because this dot of redstone will power through, and if you see if I remove the torch, it will power that when it's not supposed to. So, what I'm going to do to get rid of that is I'm going to just place a lever here. Now if I update this, it, well, okay, this keeps power because there's a torch there, but now that doesn't affect it anymore because it's not a dot of redstone. And don't turn the lever on, that's a bad idea. And yeah, so now I know where my ore is, I just need to actually take it. So I'm also going to use half slab here and go down. And from here, I can't really place dust there, so I'm just going to use repeater. And there, got my first way of powering it. Now this one, I should be able to power. So I'm going to try and find some way I can actually place something in there. Okay, here I have to place repeater because there's dust there. Here I have to place repeater because I can't get powered down without, well, powering that. And here I have to place repeater because if it does, that torch will power it. So, yeah, I need three repeaters, but hey, it works. And the whole draw detection is in a 3x3x9 rectangular prism, which is kind of cool. So yeah. Now we can detect if there's rock and rock, and all of our draws wor are working. So we've actually finished about three, yeah, about two thirds of this whole device already. We just need to detect if this side wins, and we're done. So actually, closer to three quarters. We're pretty much done. We have this huge open space to do it in. So yeah, there you go. So all we have left to do before we finish this thing is have some way to test if this player wins. And I'm going to do that pretty much the same way I did with draw detection. So I'm just going to go through all the options in order, rock, paper, scissors, and test if that wins. So I'm going to start with rock. And in order for this to win, the other player must pick scissors, because, well, rock crushes scissors. So in order for this to work, you might notice Hey, we got a little bit of a problem. There's only two places I can really take power from this, right? Here and here. We've already established I can't take power from here, 
And here, I really don't have a good way of taking this and moving it out into this big open space where I can do some more logic. I can't really do that here, and can't really do that here either. So, what am I to do? Well, here I'm going to get a bit sneaky. The reason I can take power from, say, here is because there's a repeater going to the block, right? Well, that means I could take power from the block instead, since both of these are on the edge in this open space and not tiled. So, yeah. And I'm just going to do it pretty much like that. So I'm going to take torches. You could just take power directly out, but I found it's easier to work with if I use torches, so I'm going to do it like that. And now I'm going to use repeaters to send them through these blocks. This would normally power this, but I'm just going to change that to repeater, so it doesn't. And yeah. And with that, just like that, I have this. These only turn on when I have rock or scissors, respectively. So, if I have both of these inputs, so I'm just going to and them, pretty straightforward. Then, and I'll put the output here, why not? So, if we have both of those inputs, then we win. Not going to hook it up yet, just in case there's some conflict. But yeah, if both... Now, why not? I can go ahead and just hook it up temporarily. I can change it if they don't like it. But yeah, if both, we win. So cool. Now I'm going to do paper. So paper, paper covers rock. Still never understood that combination, but eh, that's just me nitpicking the game. Anyways, so paper covers rock, so in this case, paper is going to have to win. I'm going to need number and gate. And this can get a little tricky. I'm going to get the rock from right here. So, whoops. Yeah. No need for fancy trickery here. I have a pretty easy way of getting it, like this. And paper, that is the middle one, I'll get from right here, with a repeater. So, I have a pretty straightforward way of actually... Okay, never mind. I thought I saw a way to make that a little bit... Actually, I do see a way to make this a little bit better. I could replace that with half slab and just do like that. There we go. And yeah, so there's the power. It's doing the same thing, it's just... Now I, I have power in this big open area. And I'm going to try and end them. So... I'm going to do one of my favorite compact busing tricks. And I'm going to... Hmm, that won't work, will it? Well, why not? It can work. No, it can't. Okay. Maybe, so see, this is what happens when you try improvising your design. So, I'm just going to try going like this. Somehow, and... There. So, whoops. And I'll say this right here, that's the output torch. And here... I'll j yeah, I'll just put a repeater here, just so the timing syncs up. But yeah, there you go, there's the torch. And, yeah, so that powers the wind detector too. And now, we only have one combination left. If we have scissors, and scissors cuts paper. So, if scissors cuts paper, first off I need to be able to take the power out. And I can do that here, just like before. So, here, whoops. And I have this big open space to work with. I've barely used all the space for this whole device. But, yeah, might as well use it, I guess. So, I'm going to take power from right here. And I'm going to go around. I'm going to try to... Yeah, I'm going to go around a bit. Going to... Yeah, do like this. To get power up here. Now I've got an OR gate between them. So... If this wire's off, then that means I hit both of them, and there's the wind detector. All powering the same block, too. Yeah, and there you go. With that, the rock, paper, scissors machine is finished. Scissors cuts paper. I win. Well, this player loses. I can do the same thing over here. Scissors cuts paper. And because this player has one and it's not a draw, 
this player wins, and this player loses. So yeah, there you go. Compact rock, paper, scissors machine. Could probably be even smaller, but I just felt like going to 9x9, nine nine, just, just cause, why not? And yeah, there you go. That's how you build a compact rock, paper, scissors machine. And if you want to, feel free to try to make your own version of this. It's a lot of fun to come up with some really interesting techniques. And one of my favorite techniques, which I didn't get to quite show off because of the way I did this, but, well, I kind of showed it off. What you can do is sometimes if you can't quite power a torch, like, say if my torch my block was right here instead and I needed to power this with this wire, what I could do is I could do a repeater and just place the dot of redstone right there, and then, well, torch gets powered. That's one of my favorite compact buzzing techniques, and I felt like I might as well share that with you. So yeah, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned, and see you next time.